<laughs> All righty, everybody. Well, good afternoon. I probably don't need to use this, but it's okay. I don't want to yell. Hope everybody's having a great uh, TBA so far. Uh, happy 75th anniversary. Welcome back to San Antonio. Happy to have you all here in person. My name is Danny Allen. I'm uh, very honored to, to get to serve you as TBA president-elect. And um, want to mention Mr. Mark Sines. He might be running a little bit late. He's going to be helping here too. If we need anything, Mark Sines is an instrumental facilitator for EPISD. So he'll be with us here in just a little bit. Just some quick announcements and then we'll, we'll get right to our awesome uh, clinic. Just want to encourage you, if you haven't already, please uh, make a pass through the exhibit hall. We've got even more exhibitors with us this year than, than last, so we're very excited about that. And uh, they really help us make this thing happen financially. So please go through, do some business, and, and visit with the folks there. They're open today until 5, and then they'll be open again tomorrow from uh, 9 until noon. We also have had built into the schedule exclusive exhibit hall time, so we're trying to, to help on that side of things as well. You can also get CPE credit if you need that, not only for the clinics you attend, but also your time in the exhibit hall. So that's an option too. Those CPE forms will be available through the TBA website starting next week. You'll simply log in. You'll be able to pull down the menu and mark what you attended, print it, and be able to turn that in. So we try to make it as easy as possible. Um, the handouts for all of our clinics are available through the guidebook app. We'll also have those uploaded next week on, uh, on the TBA website. We have an archive of previous clinics going way back, so that's another great resource. Speaking of the TBA website, we've put together a digital 75th anniversary memory book, and so a lot of great TBA history there, so please, if you get a chance, you can check that out. Um, later this afternoon, I want to remind you, we've got um, Mariachi Sol de Mexico concert at four o'clock. You got a chance to see them in the opening session. What a wonderful group. So we uh, want to encourage you to uh, make that concert at four o'clock. Tomorrow, we have our business luncheon at noon, and that's open to active and retired members. It's a great time to come in, some nice food. Uh, we'll do a little bit of fellowship, take care of some business, and we even have some 75th anniversary cake for you. So we hope to have you at the luncheon tomorrow. I uh, just want to remind you, this clinic is being sponsored by Ion Concert Media, which we greatly appreciate that. All the bios for our awesome clinicians are also in the guidebook app. So, please help me welcome Dr. Bradley Ginevro, Julie Giroux, Scott Winters, and Dr. Timothy Shea. Let's give them a big TBA welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I figured that we should start with, you know, sort of how, how I got involved with this, because you don't know who I am and you don't really care, which is great. You sort of want to know about Julie and how Scott and how the program works. So I was, I'm the band director of Wichita State University, and my wife is the operations manager of the Wichita Symphony. And all of a sudden there was this production going on where some software is going to help keep the film synced with a piece of music. And I happened to know the conductor, and he was like, well, I trust him because he's a conductor. You should come run this program. And so literally out of the blue, I'm, I'm on stage, and this guy is there with an iPad and a computer. And he goes, here, you're going to use your thumb, and you're going to keep the film synced with the live music. And I went, okay, here we go. And basically, from there, it expanded immensely. Um, it was an amazing performance. It was the music of Daphne and Chloe. So both suites were done, and you all know that and how unbelievably musical it can be. This idea of keeping the film synced up with an iPad and a program was brand new to me. From there, I got involved sort of being an engraver with the company. Uh, we'll show you what that is in just a second. And then I commissioned something, and then one of my students ran the program, and then I became more involved with it creatively. So I've kind of been on all sides of this to watch the evolution of this powerful product and can speak to the ability for you to do it with your students immediately. So, Scott, how did Mosaic come about? So uh, I live in Minneapolis, and I am formerly a band director and an orchestra conductor. Um, and I was getting asked to do more and more shows with you know, the film up behind you and the click tracks. I mean, honestly, the company is six years old. Eight years ago, I was the guy who said, if it plugs into a wall, it's not coming on my stage. This is acoustic, and that's it. But we've got 
has to do these video presentations and click tracks are awful and PowerPoint is awful and uh, video chapter cues are clumsy. And I figured there had to be a better way. And back then, uh, uh, Make Music was centered or headquartered in Minneapolis and they had a policy that they only hired programmers for um, smart music that were active musicians. And it just turned out they were all the best jazz gigs in town and I was hiring them to do shows all the time. We'd sit at intermission every single night and say, how can we do this better? And this was a hobby and uh, I'm not a computer programmer. I, I hired a guy to, to write a prototype and the prototype got picked up by um, Roger Kalia uh, in Los Angeles. And that led to an invitation to talk about it at a League of American Orchestras conference and that led to a couple more engagements and then all of a sudden it wasn't a hobby the company. But the whole idea was stay out of my way. I have a lot of work to get done on the podium and the, the technology cannot be slowing me down. That, that's where it came from. So we'll dive right in. Basically we looked at lots of different sync solutions, a space bar, uh, we've all used maybe QLab or you've used a PowerPoint presentation. It needed to be more organic and it needed to be more musical. So let's take a look at the interface. So everybody's been asking me since I've been around, how did you all do that? Where did, what, what, did, what were you looking at? How did you make sure that it was staying together? And this is the base of the program that's on the computer. So you can see at the top is a short score, and it's a map. It's, I mean, you couldn't play on that if you wanted to. Basically, it's giving us the idea of where the melody is, so that way I know what to follow. The red bar that's a little light on the left side there is the now bar. So what I'm doing, what Dr. Ginevra was conducting, as I was making sure that the now bar was hitting where the music was supposed to be sounding. So go ahead and hit play. <coughs> so here is obviously, this is the third movement of the symphony. And so I'm watching as things are going and just connecting for those downbeats and tempo changes. So where you see the word tempo, it's right where the mouse is right now. That's actually the fast and slow slider. And you can move that, thank you, almost dropped it. There it goes faster, and there it goes slower. And so you can do it with a mouse, that's the fail safe, but the most organic is with the iPad. So we have a, a mirrored interface on the iPad, which I can walk around and show you. And basically, I'm driving it with my thumb. So I'm, I'm watching what the conductor is doing, and it's always a percentage, but that's how we're linking it together. It's like a video game. We've had, we've had middle school students all the way up to you know old people do this and it's no problem, provided that you have some sort of connection and intuition as far as where it goes. So the best part was, for instance, when we got going with El Paso and Wednesday the other day, we came in on the dress rehearsal, Dr. Ginevra and I really had never met before, I didn't have to meet with them. I didn't say, so what are you doing here? Are you slowing down? What's your pacing going to be? What, what is the tempo of this? Nope. I said, go. We hit play and we went off to the races. So how we kind of build it is we mock it up with sort of a MIDI recording. That's how you get the pacing. And it's inside of computer program Premiere Pro that some of you may use. So that's how we get that working. What are the other functions of this? This is where it kind of gets interesting. So you can see that's the monitor there on the bottom left. So that's what actually everybody's seeing live. So that helps us if something is glitched or things like that, we know where we're at. And there are some really serious sync cues actually that that Julie built in to the piece. And so certain moments where the music hits, you can see the film there and how close you are or far away from it, so it helps. You can see the settings in there, there's a lot of sound possibilities with this. We were driving audio yesterday in addition to video. That's all behind the scenes stuff. So that's where you can start to get more and more creative about what elements do we actually want to sync together. Uh, you can see there's eight channels for audio. So it can be lots of different things. The program that you saw us run yesterday obviously was with a band and with electronics. We've also used this as an accompaniment program for choirs and or a sweetener track for bands that maybe don't have full instrumentations. You can put other sort of uh, soundtracks in there to have a sweetener so the band feels larger. So it's amazing sort of those components that you could utilize should you desire to. On the main interface, um, you can see those bays where you put the tracks, but then at the bottom left underneath the view screen You can see a volume and a fader and this actually is very interesting So when you're in rehearsal and you have the big screens and you want to say I want to start in the second movement at measure 50 
There's a quick scrubber there that we can uh, use. You're going so fast. I know. You're, you're, you're all over the place. Well, just leave stuff in place, man. Um, I would, could fade it to black, so that way it doesn't bother the conductor, the ensemble, or anybody in the hall. And then I could use the scrubber that's right below the screen where we want to go. So in rehearsal, it's seamless. It's really easy. The conductor, yet again, we wanted it so simple so the conductor never has to go, are you good? Are you good? Absolutely. No problem. We could start wherever. In fact, we did a lot of runs on the second movement the other day in the dress rehearsal where he wanted to start at a certain bar. I never held him back. That was really important for us. So it's not as cumbersome as it may seem. And that's the basic gist of the platform that we're operating with. So I was going to make Scott conduct for you so you can see it in real time. But I actually think you get the gist. So whatever the conductor does, wherever it flows, I can slow it down or speed it up. You can slow it down or speed it up. Your student can slow it down or speed it up. And it's, it's a game. And you can get these ahead of time and practice a little bit, which we do on some of the more complicated ones. But it's really intuitive. I guarantee it. We'll do show and tell a little bit. You can come up and ask if you really, really want to. So that is the basic idea of the platform right there. You need a computer. You can run it from a computer with a mouse. Or we can sync it with an iPad, which I like the most. If you're in rehearsal or you're able to see me I usually bop around a little bit to make sure that I'm conducting. And it was funny, one of the percussionists actually said, well, you're like one of the musicians in the band, aren't you? You gotta wear a tux, you gotta make sure you look like we do. You know, and you're in the band. I'm and a so, French horn player. It took me two years to have the confidence to say that when I, when I play with a mouse, I feel like I'm running a computer program. When I play it with an iPad, I'm playing a musical instrument. It is every bit as musical as playing my French horn. It just doesn't make any noise. <sighs> so that's the program. It seems easy. It can do lots of stuff, and hopefully we'll talk more about that later. But Julie, how did the Big Blue Marble come about for you? How did you conceive this? Where did it come from? Did, did, raise your hand, was everybody there yesterday? How many people actually got to see that thing yesterday? Cool. <laughs> yeah, right, so you have to see it from the backside. <laughs> and we had a meeting and they told me about the software and I immediately was in because having a background in film, you know, I'm like, oh yeah, let's do this. And of course I've been waiting for it my whole life. I've been waiting because bands, we just don't have click track ability. It's nasty. Every time you go to Midwest, you're like, oh God, please, no, no, look, I hope we're not playing with a cassette. You know, I mean, it's every year everybody tries it and it always sucks and you go why you know why uh, why isn't there some way to do it better and i think for me it was like it, i didn't have to think about it i'm in and when, you, when they say the learning curve is 20 minutes they're serious they're serious uh it's just there isn't one you, and what i like about it is the organic feel that it has because you just it's the musician that has to run it and so they just basically sit in the band and keep their part with the conductor any, like, like you would with your instrument. You don't have to worry about missing notes. So I think, yeah, I just think that that's, that, that, that hit me right there. And I think, you know, some of you are here, are some of you here because you want to do it? Yeah, I think all of you should have your hands up because anybody can do it. Uh, and I really think that everybody here has a, film in them, at least. And how many of you have seen Fantasia? That's what we're talking about, right there. And don't think that, you know, if you're a composer, don't think you have to write a piece of music to do this. You don't, you can use any piece that's out there. I'm seriously thinking about taking a film crew um, over to the UK and, and doing um, a great movie to go with Lincolnshire. Because who doesn't want to know where those, came, where those songs came from, when they were first heard, who possibly wrote them, the pubs, where he went, follow his trail, and see Lincolnshire. I, I just think that would be, you know, just super. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, as soon as he said, let's do it, I'm like, let's do it. <laughs> oh, no, that's not, that's backwards. <laughs> so Tim, we're at Midwest Clinic in 2019. Tim says, man, if we could get a room with Julie Drew, that'd be awesome. And she says, sure, let's do it. That was easy. <laughs> and so we show up at her booth, and the line is like 
45 people deep, oh, it's not happening. She says, oh, give me one minute, finishes up with the person that she's talking to. She grabs Sam, we're like, whoa, <laughs> we're even getting her personal assistant. And we were like halfway into that meeting and I had to stop her and said, Julie, you, you don't know us from anybody. What, what's going on here? You're like, you're like trusting us with everything. And what she said earlier is exactly what she said to me. I've been waiting my whole life for this to happen. Let's go do it. So thank you for that. Well, I, I think what's the coolest part about all of this is that this hasn't been done really in Brookings yet, not to the level that, that we just did it. And what I love about it too is that this isn't a hybrid, it's not coming over, it's not Harry Potter, it's not whatever, it's started with us. And it's gonna go out the other way. Because um, already I've had interest from Netflix and Disney on this. And so it's like, I don't know. I think we all feel like illegitimate children as far as always having to compete with how legitimate we are next to an orchestra. And I'm like, why does that even exist? You know, I mean, it's, it's just music. And I believe what we do is actually more on the cutting edge than what they do. They don't have as much new music as we do, ever. Not even a portion of what we do. So I really think we're on the cutting edge of it. I think this is gonna help us. And I really like the idea that we're the center of where uh, a form of entertainment can come from. And also give us another tool in our wheelhouse to throw up there because of the students now, the ones that you guys are teaching, you know, you know how they are. They are multimedia children. That is it. They're playing a video game, watching TV, texting their friends, all at the same time, and listening to music all at the same time. So to ask the next generations to come to an orchestral concert and just sit and listen to music, they didn't do that because their technology isn't that. That was our technology. That was the only way I can remember laying in my room with the lights off, listening to, you know, Dennis Bryan play the French horn. I mean, laying that out over and over and over. And that was our technology. That's not our technology today. And I don't think we'll survive if we don't move forward. And um, I'm just excited to think that, that my goal was, yes, to do this, but. But I don't just see that, I see what has to come next. And I'm really hoping, and I've been badgering Omar and John Mackey since the whole time they've been here. They're like a boring me now. Because I, <laughs> well, 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 it's actually probably isn't new, but I, um, I have been, it's like, please, please, you can do it, you can do it, I'll come. I'll show you, I'll tell you what you can do and what you can't do, you know, musically, I, anything. And um, because I know Omar has stories, I know John does. I know that there's no way you write music and not see things and not feel things. And when I did, I saw, he was originally gonna make the film, y'all were gonna, they were gonna make the film. And I sent them a mock-up of what I wanted. And he immediately shot back to me, he said, oh, okay, you need to do the film. Because you, you can do way better than we can because of my intimacy with the music. And I think that's the key to this, is your intimacy with music. It doesn't have to be yours. It doesn't have to be new. It can be any, any piece of music. You could do this. And I did it with the free program that comes with Windows, okay? Because I didn't want to learn another program. I was still writing when I started the film, so I didn't want to have to learn one more thing at that moment. Obviously now I can go home and see what all the big boys play with, and that's what I'm gonna play with. But, uh, I mean, that's as low tech as you can get. Xbox has a free one, it's good too. I almost looked at the Xbox one. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, because I can lay in bed and do the Xbox one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put that in there. Oh, no, not the gaming shot. Let me see something. <laughs> so, uh, I just love the organicness of it and how simple it is. It's not difficult, but I love the finished work because not to pick on any of the military bands, but let's face it, they've been doing it as best they could to now. I remember 12 years ago, the first time one of them said, we'd like to use screens in Midwest, went, no, oh my God, no, what? I don't think so. So we've gotten to here, but the, they're just using pictures. You know, they're just using pictures and they're using very short film clips. Uh, 
and it's a PowerPoint show. This isn't. This can use all video. We use this 100% video. And I like how the software will stretch it if it needs to be. If the guy goes like this, it can just stretch it for you. It's just fantastic. The organicness of it is just, it's so cool. And these guys are great to work with, so I mean, why wouldn't you want to do it? Uh, so, you know, I think, I just can't wait till we have enough of them where a high school band could do a one hour concert, all movies and sell tickets, 15 bucks a head, maybe do it two or three nights in a row. So not only would they be raising money and not having to sell candy bars, they would be having that experience of what film players, you know, film, what film is. I just think that would be so fantastic. I mean, that, that in itself, is just enough to enrich your students at every level because you could do this at any level. Can I, can I jump in for a minute? This week, I was talking to Randall Standridge and, and he's concerned about coming to live in Julie's shadow now because she's in the, in the band world, she's the first one to do this and, and am I gonna look like I'm just trying to copy Julie? And my response to him was, this is not a genre, this is a thing. This, the, the, got to get over that hump because this is coming this is what's going to happen and the reason I know that she talked about how organic it is to me there is a really good analogy to ballet where if you go see ballet live there is a communication happening between the dancer and the, the conductor in the pit and they're working together to give you some sort of a message and up until now when we bring technology on the stage it's a Memorex message. It was one person's idea on a Tuesday afternoon in the recording studio, and that's what you have to use today. Or in the case of Fantasia, live in Minnesota, fortunate to be with the Minnesota Orchestra. The worst performance I've ever seen of the Minnesota Orchestra was Fantasia. That was when um, Bert, Bert Parra was still the principal clarinet, and they got to the, uh, uh, is it the dance of Sugar Plum, the, the clarinet thing? And those are Stokowski's retards from 1940, and he just would not do those. And the whole clarinet section became half the clarinets followed Osmo, or I guess it was Sarah Hicks. The other half did what they thought was musical, and it was just kind of cringy because they were being forced to play the Memorex. We've had conductors that quickly got to the point of understanding that, you know what, I'm not just conducting these musicians here. I'm controlling that thing up on the screen. I did a show in Edmonton with Bill Edmonds, pictures at an exhibition. He knew the score backwards and forwards. He didn't need a score. So we did rehearsals. He figured out that he's actually controlling the film. We get to the performance. He never looked at the score. He just watched the screen. And he was like making this beat. The, the performance was like total opposite of rehearsal because he started to figure out that, oh, I'm controlling this thing up here. I want to do this now. And it works. It's what happens. And that's that's the organic. It's a thing. It's a genre. It's a new art form. And it's totally organic. Blows my mind. And if I didn't, I mean, I came up with the software, but this, this ability of digital media to dance with a live performance, I didn't invent that. It's been there. We just had to figure out how to do it. I think what's also interesting too is that the repertoire that we've been able to do really runs the gamut. I mean, from something that's really aviatoric, completely chant music, the, the program can hang, to as it be as simple as, as you know, three, four, 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 nothing big, and it still allows the freedom in the performance for the conductor and the performers to do what they want to do. Uh, I think that's also very interesting. Um, how so? How how did when you initially thought of this? I mean, we hadn't driven film with electronics that much or with sound. So was that, that was probably an extra bonus for you in, in concept, I would imagine. Yeah, I, absolutely. And, and just to address the, the Randall's issues, and I understand that, you know, I did it, they're gonna look at that and go, oh, you know, cause that's the bar, you know? And my hope was for everybody to go beyond the bar, but it, I'll have to talk to Randall, but the- <laughs> Please do. <laughs> this is gonna be my life now. Um, but I just, I, you know, I'm going to say to him, just like I'm going to say to you, the same thing, which is, I mean, this is what I tell all my composition students. 
is that, you know, when you're younger, you're always like, when am I gonna get my sound? When am I going to do this? When, do, you know, when did Copeland sound like Copeland? When did, how, you know, that's their biggest fear. It's because, you know, when you first start out, you're pretty much sounding like everybody else. That's how you start out. That's how everybody starts out. And I always tell them, the more you are yourself, the less you're like anybody else. And that, don't worry about that. That's gonna happen. All you need to worry about is being yourself. And that's kind of like musicians, that's what we are, but we always feel like you have to stay within a certain frame, like the composer did this, the composer did that. See, I'm not like that. I'm not, I'm not a don't piss on the shrine kind of person. I feel like music is an art form because everybody does it different. That's what makes it an art form. If we were just supposed to do it this way, we would do it once and then burn the paper and say, here's the chord, here's this is how it goes. That's not how it goes. You know, every rehearsal is different. Every concert is different. Every day is different in your room. So it, it, you just have to take into effect that that's what makes it art. And so it, that's what I love, the fact that Randall won't do what I do. There's just no way. Okay? And no one here is gonna do what I did. You're gonna have some story to tell, whether it's, you know, it could even be your family. It could just be or, or where you live. It, it's just pick the music and go, or write the music and go. And um, I think that's, now my mind can't get off of chasing that rainbow, but, um, <laughs> and I have to hit John and Omar again, but, uh, um, yeah, I mean, there's just, there is no limit, and I don't think you should, and the software is free. It's not like you have to run out of here and go buy anything new. You probably already have a laptop. You probably already have an iPad. Uh, the software is free. I mean, why would you not do it? That's, that's kind of the question for me because I know everybody has a story to tell. So tell them. So, and, and I want to jump in here again. As we were getting ready to go, internally, we had concerns because, I mean, we've done some big shows before, but what we did yesterday, that's, I mean, that was pretty over the top. That, I don't think that there has been a live concert in any uh, format, choir, orchestra, concert band, that's delivered or attempted, I don't, Seems like it worked, but delivering the sound effects in Dolby 5.1 surround sound, that, that was pretty over the top. And we were a little bit worried that we were going to scare people away that, well, yeah, but I mean, El Paso Lynn can do that, but there's no way. We have customers, junior high bands, choirs, orchestras in extremely rural districts with very limited resources. The software's free. Our titles started about $30 to rent them for the school year. And it is simply download the software, download the show file, give this to your third trumpet that needs a little bit of help with rhythm, <laughs> and let them go. And they can deliver a good thing for you. Give it to your colleague, and you'll give it. You'll get a perfect sync. It's not hard, and it, we we do everything we can to keep it affordable. You want to you want to take it the next step. You know what you missed today? <laughs> We were going to scent the room. As we started working on this, I happened to meet the guy who does scenting for the Disney theme parks. And he sold me on the idea of, in the second movement, making the hall smell like a rainforest. So when we were doing our tests with the scenting, we had the surround sound going, we had the video playing, and then I threw the scent into the room. I was like trying to spot the speakers. <laughs> it was crazy. If they want to do that, it works. It works really, really well. It just was a little bit more than yeah, any I mean, of us could stomach for know, this show. Yeah, my panic level, of course, was <laughs> super high. Because, uh, you know, I never get nervous. I, I go on stage, and my, I'm not nervous. I just do not care. I mean, that's just that's how I've always been. I was horrified. I've been horrified for months, really, because this is. Writing music is one thing. You go to a band concert, I mean, unless you get hit by a tornado, it's just not going to explode. It's just, it's just, it's going to happen. Your concert's going to happen, no matter what happens. This, maybe not, you know, so in the back of my mind, what if this, what if, what if, what ifs? And we had our share of what ifs. Several yesterday that, that made me go, oh my God. Uh, and, um, but they were so minor in the scheme of things, you know. So, and I'm sure the next time we do it, it'll be something different, and it'll be the same thing. Um, so that was what obviously scared me. Um, the music part, when I asked where I could add music, that was, that was 
my concern. And the reason is, is because, you know, I've made my life as a composer and an orchestrator. I started out as an orchestrator. And I love band because it's harder to write for band than it is for, for orchestra. Orchestra, you have the whole wheelhouse. You know, band, you do not. Plus, you have a lot of people that, instruments that don't play well with others. Um, sounds like clarinet comes to mind. But um, it's, it's that thing, you know. Or, or, or Lincolnshire, let's think about those pairings he's got. Oh, thank you, Christopher, thank you. Um, but we have things missing. Orchestra does too. I mean, we just don't have that surround sound low. We don't have it. So to be able to add that. So for me, the more I work with the software and now where I am at this point, I know what I should add musically. And it is going to be those things that don't exist. Don't try and add music sounds that are already existing. Add things that don't exist. Add voice. Add the low end. Add synth sounds. Because you don't want to take away from the acoustic. You just want to improve it. You want to make the experience that much more. And I know Brad was like, I don't know what was happening, but we felt it on the stage, you know, and it's that first, ooh, that sinks in there. I, I am like, and they couldn't hear it at all, but they could feel it. And I felt it where I was sitting, I was like, wow, that's just so cool. Well, you can't do that now. So it's kind of like you already got this great recipe and you're just adding, you know, pears well with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious at that. So when you're making your movies at home, that's, that's probably where you need to stay. I mean, you don't want to throw a bunch of 30 second notes. That's not going to happen. You know, that does take a first round. It's just not going to happen. I think it did. <laughs> no, I know it won't. I know it won't. Um, uh, just watching it, it's just, it's too much. Um, I think you could do it in short sections. And I think you just, it, and you would have, but you would have to really, he would have to really be on because uh, having worked in films, you can see the difference of one hundredth of a second. So whenever every horror movie I ever worked on, one hundredth of a second, it would be like music stab. You know, it's like oh god, I missed that one, and that's one hundredth of a second. So it's it's no, this is one hundredth of a second. But uh, and to me, that's where thirty second notes are too. Uh, if you're going fast, but pads. Low ends, those kind of things. I wouldn't sit there and think of any of these either. No. Why? I have to get bands there, I get tortured and go, dang, 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 dang. So <laughs> why would I do that? Plus, you know, they have that ability. I just think that the sounds, that's where they live. It just it takes it to that next level. That, that, that you, it, it, it's a film experience. For sure. So, so, Brad, what was it like for you kind of coming in after spending a lot of time with the piece? And then here's the software. What was it? What was it like, as, you know, from the conductor performer standpoint? You know, the, the biggest thing is I didn't know what this was going to be. I didn't know what you guys were going to be doing. Uh, and for all of you that are here that weren't part of it, we had an hour together, and pretty much after an hour, we were kind of ready. At least that's what they were saying. I had still had no idea. <laughs> and they were saying, "Yeah, I think we're good." I said, "Really?" Uh, but what Julie said, you know, I've never been in a performance where you can feel the sound. There were a lot of those things she was talking about that I could feel it in my feet. I mean, it was it was so visceral that when you, you and we couldn't hear it because we were behind the speakers, but just that sense of you were so connected to the music from even a feeling standpoint, right? Uh, but the, the great thing for me, except for some of the things that we had to talk about, you know, where do we start? Uh, other than that, it was just like, I'm conducting a concert, you know, it's, there was nothing I was doing that was any different than what I normally would do. Uh, there was one time that I, that I felt like I was leading us the, the synth to a downbeat, right. and we, we talked about that, and you, we said, okay, we'll, we'll get it, and, and we did. So it really, used from a user friendly standpoint, it was nothing, nothing different for us. We, I just, I stood on the podium, did my thing, and it just worked. Uh, it was most of, most of our rehearsal was balance That's things, right. trying to get the surround sound balance to the to the ensemble. We probably spent what seventy percent of our time doing that. Yeah, it, it was more getting the sound level set than anything. Everything else just kind of worked. The surround sound was so easy. It's two speakers in the front, two speakers in the back. It's not hard. But 
every time you did a test. That was the issue. How much of that back? If you don't have the stuff coming from the back, you lose all the spatial concept. But if you have too much crickets from the back, then when she called it the cherry jack. <laughs> <laughs> There's one bird in there that it's so loud it goes like it was a cherry jack. You're like, oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think that's so. That's going to be my question: is the software will run that? So it'll how how many channels of sound can it split up? Eight. Eight. Yep. So there you go. So if you yep. want to have eight different speakers, we had thought about that because mm -hmm. of this hall is built. We couldn't put them in the aisle, right? So there was just those places up in the area that's where we had to go with it. But, so, you know. so my perspective is the surround sound thing for the right piece of music. You, you can't throw that in everywhere, but for the right piece of music, surround sound in a concert is a viable option. It's not hard. But you do need to allow some time to adjust balances and get the balances where you want. Yeah, because you know how many band concerts have you been when they are playing along with some file and you're like, oh god, you know, it's just too much of that. It's not enough of that. It's gross. It's not, you know, this doesn't do that. You have the ability to just go ahead and balance it. Not to mention that you guys can balance it on the fly. Yeah, yeah. we got the mixer here. On there, there's a pull them down. Yep. And actually, there was a moment where she was like, can we pull that down to get closer? It's too loud. I'm like, yep. Boom. Right there. So you can, yeah. So you could actually, if you wanted to, probably be in the headset with somebody and they can just tell you, you know, oh my, because they might be sitting someplace else. Because again, this person is going to be sitting on the stage, so they're not going to be able to hear that. So balancing it ahead of time is, it's, it's really foolproof because once you do it once, that's it. Set it. It's just going to remember it. That's going to be that. And just go. But. So she mentioned headset, and that, uh, what you saw yesterday was an immense setup. Two people on stage with cables and all kinds of equipment. Sitting right here in the front row, this is Owen Kaliri. He is like the mastermind behind the surround sound and also a lot of being able to get the, the three screen video to go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Owen. <laughs> but Tim was running the primary. And Owen had the headset on talking with the control room, and he was running a redundant system so that if anything catastrophic would happen on Tim's machine, they, they had a switcher, Owen could just press the button, and then he's live, and you as the audience just see a flicker, and that's, that's all you would notice. But I would say 99% of the shows that we do is just one guy with a laptop, HDMI, plugged into the projector, that's it. And it's all up to you to decide what your tolerance is for failure. I mean, you know, if, if you've got a concert where um, you're okay, if that video feed doesn't work, and you have to say, wait a second, we're gonna have to plug that back in again, you really don't need a redundant system. The pro orchestras won't talk to us unless we're able to come with the redundancy. But like you said, it's not necessary. Nope. And like, um, the blue marble comes in one screen for three screens. So it's up to you which one you want to do. And um, I think the most important thing is, is really, uh, so many of you are working you know, in a school district or working in a school and you're gonna get a new hall at some point. Be sure that that screen capability is built into that. I mean, if you're in college, well, you must have an opera, you know, you've got, they're doing operas. They have to have a means of bringing things so you're, you're kind of in a better space that way if you're in university, not to mention you know, film departments. So, but if, you, if you're just at your high school, my, again with the organicness of it, is if you are doing it and it's on the side, I despise that. I hate sides. Because you have to choose whether you're gonna look at the film or you're gonna look at the band. I don't want that. I want to see the band and I want to see the film and I want it to be right there. So that screen that is above the band to me is what makes it. Because again, you just it feels so separate. It doesn't feel like part of it with this. Now three screen, yes. Now all of a sudden it's just everywhere you look, you're you're part of it. But the side screens you can see, you know, you can see them without looking at them. And so the middle screen to me is the most important thing. So that's the thing that I'm going to be doing when I go out of here. Is I'm going to I want to try to get a better way to put a screen on. 
it's cheaper you know, to have people come in and fly some screen from here and there and everywhere. And because um, I want to have that capability. And I want it to be cheap. I mean, right now you can go buy an inflatable, you know, 15 foot screen for your backyard and, and die a peach stroke watching it. But um, <laughs> uh, so I'm not thinking about that kind of technology, but not far from it. Because if it's inflated and it far, falls over, it's not going to kill anybody, you know? And then if it's really tragic, you can just do that beach ball thing with it until, you know, so the concert turns into a whole other episode. But um, I. Uh, I, to me, that's the, that's the, again, with me, I'm always just waiting for this next thing in technology, but to me, that's the one, because that's the, that's a big deal if you don't have the means to bring that screen well, down. And I'm just one guy, but I've been doing these shows now for six years, and I am so past the rectangle. That's a box. Let's get out of the box. The best shows I've seen are projection mapped right onto your architecture, because then this whole concept of, she's exactly right, you don't want the film over here and the band here. You want it to feel like a cohesive artistic experience. As soon as you take the screen away and the, the thing you're watching visually is in the architecture, it becomes part of, it's not this, that's so, that's so separate, right? That's just in a box over there. If it was projected up here behind me, it's part of your experience. So you don't need a screen. It, and it's really crazy how your eyes ignore the lines, you know, the, the bends in the wall, the creases in the wall. It, it's, it, it, all of that is so much compensated for by, um, it becomes an immersive, organic, artistic experience. So don't be afraid to try this if you don't have a screen, just throw it up on a wall somewhere. Yeah, we had that conversation about here, yeah. and we were going to do yeah. it here, but the, the you know that shell has these big, wide, brown stripes. There's a limit to everything, and those cracks in the shell would have been a little bit. I mean, they're this wide and this brown, <laughs> and it's like area is like, oh, well, can't quite get past that. But but if you have just a white shell, absolutely, and the stronger your projector is, the more it's going to hide anything. Yes. Yeah. Multimedia symphony, that's a thing, but yeah. that's really big. Well, most of our business by volume, by number of sales, most of what we do is junior high, high schools that, that really don't have, even if they can swing Blue Marble musically, they just don't have the resources to do it from a production stand standpoint. We want to work with you, have your kids make videos. Uh, if it's a score that, so Tim was talking about engraving. That's a reduction of the main score. That's the expensive part about making our show files. If we have that done already, and you send us your film that's less than seven minutes long, we'll, it takes us no time. We'll take your film, throw it in there, send it back out the door, and we don't charge you anything, okay? Then, on top of that, if your student happens to build something that has some commercial value, we'll license it from them Put it in our library, and in, then when somebody else rents it, we pay royalties for that licensing. We have a few composers in our band program as well. Nice. And so, yeah. Um, that was kind of fun. So, there's uh, back in this back, there's these half sheets, mm -hmm. and this QR code down in the bottom takes you either to Julie's website if you click on that link, or it takes you to our website. And <laughs> one thing that hasn't been mentioned is. You can, you know, Blue Marble is out there available, but then we also have over 120 other titles from junior high up to pro groups. And you, you just hit the shop tab on our website, scroll through, you can search by compose, you can search by topic. If you find what you like, you pay a rental fee, you, get, you download the file and you use it. If you don't find what you like, then we're back to here. Email us. We're trying to build this library. All morning long today, I've been talking to people coming to our booth saying, Go check out the website. If you don't see what you like, 
please email me, say, I'm doing this piece, I'd like a visual, and if we see any commercial value to it, I'd rather build the library by working with you rather than just saying, here, we built this, does anybody like it? So we'll charge you the rental, but you're basically getting a commission for the price of a rental. Yes, sir. Um, I thought the performance yesterday was, was just marvelous, and, and I think everybody did. Um, and the audience experience was very, very important. But, but the players were also equally important. How do you, do you show the, the full production film way to the players beforehand, or how do they get the experience that the audience? We, so we've got a film by a choral composer who's got a multimedia symphony for chorus, orchestra, and projected visual. If you rent that title, in your contract with her, there's a clause that says you will have a video viewing party with your choir so that they can see. It, it, it totally inform, re-informs the way you want to deliver the music when, when it's connected with a film like that. I had the files too. I mean, the person that's doing the music, I mean, I had the files. So I had the music synced with the film and I sent that thing out to everyone. But we recorded it in June, uh, and then what she was nice enough to do was to send us all the all the things synced so that the band. I mean, it wasn't you went at the same concert hall to watch it, but you were able to see everything. And you know, then I'm telling the band, I know you're going to want to. Please don't watch the screen while we're playing. <laughs> and and, and the performance yesterday, I caught myself twice <laughs> where I'm looking up and I'm going, "What are you doing?" Because you're doing exactly what you told them not to do. <laughs> But, uh, but but yeah, it's one of those things. I, I said so I said to Julie at dinner last night. I said I can't wait to be able to be an audience member and to watch it done by somebody else, so I can experience. I mean, just standing on stage and, and feeling the sound in my feet as they're doing some of that. I'm going, this is this is awesome. And I just can't wait to experience it from that standpoint. But you know, most of the ensemble all saw it, but you know, off their computers or on their TV at home. I think this is different though. I, I think that, I mean, I, I, my whole first of my career was in pits and I'm a conductor so I can see everything. I was, I was felt bad that nobody else can see anything, but that in that world, that's okay. I think in this world, it really does make an impact when the musicians see what the audience is gonna see and they can kind of adjust their concept of their playing based on, I mean, it's not that, this is what Julie has, remarked on oftentimes to me. It used to be that the film drove the show, right? And if you were the orchestra that laid down the soundtrack for the film, you were just following the film and the film was running. That's not what this is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be the film is in charge. It's supposed to be that ballet dance where each part is equal, but in order to get fully equal, it would be nice if the players knew what they were dancing with. Not to mention that if you're gonna be doing this with your band, let's say, there's no, nothing stopping you from having that. That one player that's gonna run this, that's going to be doing it anyway, needs to practice anyway. There's nothing that stops you from throwing it up on the wall mm -hmm. behind the conductor at every rehearsal if you want to, so that they know everything that's going on. And I do believe that as a musician, you know, we're always, when we're not dealing with film, we're always here, and the emotions are coming from inside of you. But they can be greatly affected by what you see. I mean, our emotions are. So if you know that you're sitting there playing this doo 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 doo, but then all of a sudden you see baby turtles trying to get to the beach, now you're going to play baby turtles. Right. So I think that you know it would be invaluable to just let this kid who's doing the thing get all the practice he wants to, and every time you play it in band, let him go. You say rehearsal number 45, let him get used to finding rehearsal number 45. And um, you know I would suggest using your third trumpet player, but. Uh, <laughs> but we're also a clarinet player here, yeah. Yeah, we're a clarinet player, for sure. And, and when we were, when we were in rehearsal yesterday, or uh, sorry, I lost track today, yeah, right. uh, whenever we did the rehearsal, we were jumping around a lot, and within five seconds, he was where he needed to be. And I'd look over, and he'd be like, what are you waiting for? I'm good. And I'm like, okay, sorry. But, I mean, I'd say 45, and he'd go, shh, shh. And 
yeah, that, that I'm, I'm waiting to make sure he's looking at me and he's like, dude, that was 35 minutes ago, go ahead. <laughs> so it really, there was no time between when we were jumping around to rehearse and he was getting it right where it needed to be. That iPad, you know, I'm a French horn player. I'm really used to this with my horn, you know, here, I'm here. The iPad is the same thing, here. And all of a sudden we become like a soloist working with a conductor, you know? like. Uh, uh, we've got a film for pictures at an exhibition where there's an entrance right in the middle of Baba Yaga that will never happen unless the conductor follows the operator and the operator's just going boom and everything synchronizes. It's that nonverbal communication. Question? Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the synths in particular, were they played live or are they part of the box? Yeah, I, you know, when I'm doing my sound box, they had to work with my sound box. So they, okay. had, my, they had my MIDI file. But I also had that file, and I'm saying that all the sets, all you know, all eight staffs that are at the bottom, those go to you guys. And so I just sent them the sound file, and they just put it in there. Put it in there. Okay. And when you talked about having to balance the 5.1s and everything, and you had volume settings, does that turn down the overall mix, or can you just turn down the pterodactyl? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. Depends on what's tracked, right? Yeah, so so what we discovered is that it's really hard to build good surround sound files. The reason that those files work so well is because some guy went out in the forest and recorded the environment, which means that that pterodactyl is mixed right in with the crickets and everything else. So getting that pterodactyl <laughs> is not a separate track. <laughs> no, we, we all fought and lost with that pterodactyl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know, you hear it on every film. I was watching the one with the rock the other day where they're in the jungle and, and there's that same bird. I mean, <laughs> somebody needs to take that bird out. It's just like, <laughs> Everybody else is listening, and then the pterodactyl comes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, For the audience members talking, because <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. there were some, there were some people behind us that were making some sound, and I honestly thought that's what it was at first until yeah. I saw the speaker. I think it's yeah. a macaw. I think, I, I think that's what it's a. It's a. I remember now. There, they were. I have the names of everything that was on that recording because of the man that does those recordings. Yeah. I mean, any any film you see this when they're outside, they're his soundtrack. So, so natural. Yeah, he records in 16, 16 tracks. Mm -hmm. So you can get, you know, like if you're going for that kind of thing, and they're super not expensive, you can go to his website, Mindful Audio, and you can, you know, I mean, I talk with him, you do not need to do that. You can go there and download if you want just stereo, or if you want all 16 tracks. Well, actually, you get stereo or all 16 tracks, and you decide which ones you want to use. So I could have probably taken the track out of Miss Pterodactyl, but I couldn't because she was so loud, she was bleeding onto the other track. So I could have just taken hers out. Mm -hmm. But truthfully, if when you go to add sound to the, the, the new piece that you guys are gonna make, it would be limited to your software. If you have the capability of exporting eight track, you know, whether you have that or not. Any other questions? Sorry, the videos themselves, uh, in that particular, in your particular group, Marvel, were those ones that you did, or were these you went out and got somewhere? Or? Oh yeah, no, I bought those. Okay. Yeah, so so what's great is there's so many sites out there. You, there's some that it's all 100% free. Pexels, Pexels is free. Oh, okay. Uh, some of them are like 50 bucks for a year. Download all you can stand, and then the, uh, I think the big, the most expensive one is. Um, I stock and find for free. Yeah, I stock. You're gonna have to pay for it, but truthfully, even then, it's not that bad. And uh, and you own it, you know. I mean, I own the film, so it's it's kind of that. It's he's, there's so much footage out there; it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Not to mention, you could even go to YouTube and just text that guy and say, "Man, I love your video of you know the basketball shot from four feet away or four miles away, and, and I want to use it." So there's just as simple as that. And some of them just want to be seen, obviously. Yeah. That's why they put it on YouTube, so. And we've gotten really good at that. If you find a film that you like that's done already, you find it on YouTube, you'd like to put it into your concert, send us an email, and we're getting pretty good at, at getting the rights, getting them to, to uh, send over the rights to be able to share that video. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. As far as the additional audio,
So we just did, this spring, we did a piece by Andrea Ramsey called The Suffrage from Nada, Choir and Instruments. And that narration, which needs to be delivered live, was highly synchronized with film. So we sat down and invented um, a way to deliver the film to the audience. And then we split it and sent to the narrator, basically, uh, uh, teleprompter on steroids that gave the narration, but also the pace. So as long, and basically it was a following a bouncing ball kind of a thing, and as long as they stayed roughly in line with the bouncing ball, the narration was synchronized to the film. And then, when we built the file, you can have that live narrator do it, or the narration is in there by a professional voice actor, and you can turn that on in the software, and then the narration is delivered electronically for you. When we speed it up or slow it down, it's roughly to 50% or no less, depending on the tempo, and there's very little distortion. I mean, hardly any at all. Uh, so yeah, it can work absolutely straight away. Yeah, I should also mention, um, as we close up here, that uh, there are there, there's a site online that's uh, P, I think that's the name of it, Public Domain Film, or Public Domain Film, something like that. But if you just search that, there are so many movies that are actually public domain now. So as a composer, you just wanted to write to. In the beginning, I wanted to, I tried to get, and this was, you know, like I said, I've been trying to do this for so long. About 15 years ago, I went up to Jim Barnes and Francis, and I was talking, and then Frank, and I was talking with all of them. I said, man, if, we, if I did this, would you do a five minute piece of music to this silent film? And they were like, yeah, I'd do it, and I'd do it, and I'd do it. And, um, I just got bogged down in, in life and didn't get around to doing it. But I, obviously, I'm going to go back. There's so many silent films. Uh, th the first one I did was The Hitcher, which was a film, and we did it in Europe, and then we did it here, and then we did it in Los Angeles. And then we, we were, uh, so it was, that was Alfred Hitchcock's first movie anyway. And it's a silent film. And, it, you know, it's usually that horrifying music that's behind it, some uh, crazed, um, piano player that's like on crack uh, that's playing 90 miles an hour to this silent film, they become absolutely work of art when you actually write music to it. Because it's a very different experience. And um, so you could always do that. You could always find silent films to find a piece of music that really goes well with it and play something that actually makes sense with that silent film. And that's for free. But there are tons of other films that are on there with sound almost out of time. Any other questions? So with this program, can you stick out to a maybe a custom music store and only use just maybe the, uh, the special the sound effects element or the sample element to play down to another area? Yeah, we don't, yeah, you can, you can leave the, the video blank and just drive audio. Software also drives any cues in the hall. It will do video cues, it will do comms, it will do all of that stuff. You can use it just to drive stage cues for the show, any one or all of them at the same time. Is there any limit to the size of samples that you put through it? No, we haven't found the upper limit yet. Yeah, 4K, is, 4K gets a little bit harder as the film gets longer, but that's so over the top anyway. Yeah, um, I know on mine that you know you can just, I wrote the symphony first, period, I just wrote the symphony. And then I put the song together. The symphony stands alone. But there also, if you get my symphony, it'll be free to just download the sounds of the way. Four sound quality that you have. I mean, I own those two. I bought those two. I have a license for those, so you can just download that. That'll be for free. It, it's just when you go to put the film in there, you know. But you will have you will have that capability to just download and use them. And it would be the same with your project. You know, you can use this to just drive sound if you want to. The one thing I would say. Uh, the invitation to you guys do your own thing and then bring it to us and we'll put it in the software and ship the fuck out to you is legitimate and heartfelt. The best way to do that though is let us know in advance and let us send you the syncing audio track. It, life gets a whole lot easier if you let us pick 
the audio track that's going to be used to make the sync at the back side. So you tell us we want to do this, we'll send you an audio file, you do whatever you want, send your files back, and then our job gets a lot easier if you're using uh, an audio, a syncing audio track that we've kind of vetted. So I also feel that at the beginning of each school year, you just tell all your kids to download the free software and see what happens. You might, be, you, you might create a movement 